And you can, of course, and don't forget, get on Platform Plus. Just three bucks a week, okay? And you can download and replay everything we've broadcast, uh, have access to our archive, and we're going to package it up better and make it easier to use as time goes on. So please, I encourage you to join Platform Plus, become a subscriber, not just uh, join the resistance, uh, help the resistance continue. All right. Um, I had a day off yesterday, had some other stuff to do. It wasn't a day off, actually. It was just working with other stuff. Thank you, Michael, for filling in on the Bickle Shift and Tina Nixon. And, man, that was a good conversation uh, Tina had uh, and a good interview she did on the issue of forestry slash. And there's just no doubt, uh, no matter what the industry says, that forestry slash and detritus has exacerbated the impact of um, subtropical storm um, Gabriel in the affected regions and of course you know there's still recovery operations there's still a lot of hard work being done there and there's going to be impacts for a long time one of the uh, impacts has been and geez it's been hard getting to the truth of this claims anecdotal claims that there has been particularly amongst gang members in, in, in affected areas and that's northern bay of plenty um you know napier gisborne east cape there has been an upsurge in crime. There has been looting, and their organised crime, that's called gangs, those scum who are gangs, um, have been standing over people. I heard an anecdotal story at a function I was on last night that some people uh, in a helicopter dropping fuel to a community were basically hijacked, and the fuel was hijacked as soon as it was dropped off. Now. They're appalling stories, and in the situation we're in with poor communication and a lot of other stuff going on, it's bloody hard to verify them. Now, now Ben and I extracted the Michael, I think, a little bit out of Kerry Allen, who said, cut it out, and uh, Stuart Nash's response was, now's not the time to be a scumbag gang member. Um, and Chris Hipkins has come out and said, there is no crime wave post-storm um, crime wave. It doesn't exist. And the cops have been rather reticent on it. So, what is going on here? And what do we make of this, I'm sorry, weak as um, government response? Well, somebody who's uh, up north and has lived somewhat through this has been uh, New Zealand First uh, candidate, politician, um, well known to many of you, Shane Jones. And uh, Shane's kind of connected to his community. So we thought we'd get him on and ask him what he thinks ha is happening on the ground. Shane, good morning to you again. Thank you for, for joining us. Kia ora. Kia ora. Morning, folks. All right. First thing, Shane, what are you hearing? Has there been a crime wave largely driven by gangs uh, as a result of, of what's gone on with Gabriel or not? In Hawke's Bay, it's well known that there is a plague of the mongrel mob. There are a few Black Power members there as well, and recently they've been shooting each other. To show the foul mentality that plagues their decision-making, they decided to continue shooting during the early stages of the Gabriel disaster. If anyone believes that the gangs are not involved with making people's lives misery, not only during this particular terrible episode, but in broad terms, then they're either a blind devotee of the Green Party or they're just so secluded they're living in a gated community. What Kitty Allen and Stu ought to have said is they ought to have come out with extreme force in their rhetoric, laying down some neon boundaries. If you are involved in looting, you will be straight to court we are taking legislation and urgency. There will be no remand, irrespective of the size of your infraction or offence. This is a great opportunity to reset what law and order means for the day-to-day -day lives of garden variety Kiwis, who probably don't encounter a lot of gangs up in the East Valley in the ordinary course of their lives, because mm. most of the victims of this gang plague are often working class people, and many of them belong to the very community in the broad sense that <clears throat> these scrotes come from. And I think that's really where the Prime Minister and Labour have missed a beat. This was a brilliant opportunity to bring the hammer down. Mm. Shane, uh, I, look, there is some dispute as to whether there is a post-storm crime wave. If this isn't just rumour 
uh, and the rumour mill, mill working. How convinced are you that there has been this surge of looting and, and of lawlessness? But you want to nip lawlessness in the bud before... Yeah, but Shane, how much proof is there that it actually exists? Because we seem to get uh, from, from Chris Hipkins, who said he's talked to the police commissioner, it's not a big deal. OK, so we know from Stu Nash that um, there has been contact between the gang leaders yeah. and, um, and, and the government. And some people have shot um, Stu Nash down from saying they ought not to have been contact. I doubt whether these gang leaders themselves are in control of their young people. Yeah. The young recruits and new entrants to the gang scene need to suffer something akin to the mark of Cain. There is a cost when you join an organization that is organized to undertake ongoing criminal harm to your community. At the moment, there's no cost belonging to a gang. If you go in uh, to court as a gang member, you're treated as an ordinary citizen. That should change overnight. Yeah. People need to be taught that if in New Zealand you willingly, through your family or your other circumstances, join a gang, then immediately you go up the scale of punitive response from mm. the state. And if that's how you want to spend the rest of your life, then fine, get the hell out of my face. But this notion that you can join a gang and go on a journey of criminality, crime, misery, hurt, and then the courts don't treat you as something akin to a narco-terrorist group, that's the level of change that's needed in New Zealand society. Yeah. Uh, Shane, do you think your average gang member or looter is going to respond to the um, oh-do-behave message from Kerry Allen and, and Stu Nash? No, I, uh, I, uh, I've got quite a bit of time for Stu. I've been in Parliament with him he for a long time. He was at your party. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, and I know Kitty. Uh, look, I'm, I'm I'm astounded that the Minister of Justice and the Minister of Police, but look, they're being fitted, and uh, the average gang member number one doesn't know who Kitty is, and number two only respond to one thing, and that's what they call in the in the Northern uh, Maori way of talking, ring a car, the strong hand. That's yeah. the only thing these young guys understand. They they're not interested in poetry, they're not interested in psychiatry, they're not interested in, um, in Salvation Army charity, they're only interested in one thing, give me what I want or I'll knock your head off. Well, fine, if that's how you want to live your life, then there's a new rule. Anyone with an active association with a gang engaged in criminality, the immediate punitive regime you enter into is different than ordinary Kiwis who fall mm. afoul of the law. Yeah. I've got to say, we invited Harry Tam onto the program this week. Uh, you know, wouldn't come on. Um, nothing to do with him, he said. Was that his line, uh, Ben? Nothing to do with him, apparently, with Harry Tam. Um, remarkable, um, I think. Though, though uh, your leaders had problems with, with Harry Tam in the past. Uh, Shane, I I'm going to come back to this, though. If the police say there isn't a wave of crime, is there or not? Okay, what the police, as I understand, have said is where the crime is showing itself is um, in uh, domestic um, domestic violence. But, you know, there's been 57 or 63, or words to that effect, arrests made, according to yeah. the Commissioner of Police. Mm. And I can guarantee not every single one of those arrests is some loser bashing his daughter yeah. or bashing his wife. I can yeah. guarantee you that. Yeah. I, I, I think we're missing the beat here. We already know that that particular area is riddled with gang crime. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. even know why we're bothering to justify whether it's 10, 15, 5. We know that mm. the Hawke's Bay is the citadel that gang members worship at. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And they go up uh, and they have their patching ceremonies and they all get together there. That's right. And, well, and they, get get on the, they go up on the mo they, they go up that moanga. Forget the name of the yeah, hill. Yeah, yeah. And then they have um, what is... Uh, okay, some will argue, oh, well, all we're doing is practising our culture. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I, I, I put my knowledge of Maori culture up against anyone in New Zealand. Mm. The culture of Maori is once you've done wrong, it's Old Testament, an eye for an eye. But yeah. these people want to go around poking your eye, your neighbour's eye, but keep wearing, uh, keep, keep wearing um, uh, uh, those sort of, sort of snake dog uh, sunglasses. Yeah. No, no, had yeah. enough of that. Uh, would you admit, Shane, um, that uh, in this crisis or in, during this crisis, Chris Hipkins is doing pretty well popularity-wise? Yeah, look, um, 
This is a, a, an awful event. I mean, on the Esk Valley, I've been there very many times. Mm. I would uh, remind uh, everyone, though, during the time I was the provincial minister, we, um, we received a host of appeals from people associated with regional government. Please give us a billion dollars to repair our stop banks. Yeah. And I was unable to uh, make progress other than find two or three hundred million which I did through the Shovel Ready project. Mm. And Basil Chamberlain, a very, very knowledgeable New Zealander, warned the government in 2019, if resilience work is not invested in now, the big climate dump that's coming will ruin the food growing capacity of New Zealand. If you can find Basil Chamberlain, I don't know where he is, I think he's up in Taranaki. Yeah. He was the bloke who led a small delegation and everything that they predicted has come to pass. But I... I couldn't break through the climate change mentality of mitigation. You know, I happen to believe we need a new banner now, not climate change, but climate resilience. The ability of farmers in New Zealand and yeah. Kiwis, 5 billion of us, to change the emissions profile of the world is somewhere near zero. Yeah, that's Our right, ability yeah. to make our community more resilient is somewhere near 100. Yeah, and, and I, I, look, I think that's a very interesting wider point you raise. We can't stop China building coal plants. Our, our, our contribution to global emissions is 0.0172%, I think, was the last figure I saw. So the idea that we can stop it is just ridiculous and we don't have that much pull in the world. We've got to get ready for it. Right? Yeah, I've always been a supporter of climate adaptation. I know I took it uh, a sock in the chops um, yeah. over the, the billion tree strategy, but my credo was always one tr a right tree, right place. I do think the forestry sector now, they have a crisis of social licence. Yeah. Yeah, they do, and I, I don't think they've, uh, they've behaved particularly well or, or we haven't addressed that. Shane, look, I thank you for your time this morning, and just tell you from the text, we've got a lot of people agreeing with, with what you've said this morning. Um, and look, I've tried to get the police minister. I will try and get Stu Nash on in the next couple of days and, and, and sort this out. But I think uh, I think the people on the ground there and the anecdotal and, and, and look, basically, Stuart Nash and Kerry Allen wouldn't have said that unless it was a problem, would they? You know. Yeah. Look, the, the, I, I repeat again: do not get hung up on how you're classifying the incidents that are being reported. Yeah. Bank on the fact that that part of New Zealand is already uh, infused with deep gang dysfunctionalism. And yeah. this presents an opportunity to say, if you move your dysfunctionalism to a new level in the face of a crisis, yeah. then there's a new range of punitive strikes against you. Yeah. Zero tolerance. Have a nice day. Goodbye. <laughs> Shane, I thank you for your time. You have a nice day too. That is Shane Jones, a uh, New Zealand First candidate, former New Zealand First Minister in the 2017-2020 uh, Labor New Zealand First Green Cover. Oh, what an unholy alliance that was. OK, um, just some observations on this. The other thing is that, that local communities have been putting up roadblocks because of this problem. So that suggests to me it's real. And the cops have issued sort of warnings, don't you know, block main highways. Jeez, during COVID, during COVID up in the Bay of Plenty and, and other places around the country, particularly the North Island, People who were essentially gang members were getting out of COVID restrictions by saying, I'm running a roadblock for the community, which is just an excuse to stand on the, on the side of the road, drink alcohol, and basically terrorise people going about their lawful business. The government and the police did nothing. Did nothing about that. That was fine. Oh, because they wanted to be culturally bloody sensitive. Uh, and now they're telling off or wagging the finger at communities that are literally having to band together to protect themselves in times of crisis. I just see it as a huge and massive, massive double standard.